we got some new stuff. So, recently I've sold a few bits and pieces to um, focus more of my hobbies into one direction. So um, I sold my motorbike and a few other bits and pieces and I had some money to throw at some new shooting gear. So I went ahead and got a Sony Mark V RX100 and an Eagle Vision cam. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today. Uh, I decided to go with Eagle Vision instead of uh, the side shot scope cam because I kind of want um, my gear to be sort of able to be used in more than one way. Um, and using, by getting the RX100, um, it does a whole bunch of cool stuff. It's like a really powerful camera that can do many different things. Um, and it's sort of a bit more versatile for my uh, use than a GoPro would be. Um, so that's sort of the direction that I went with it. Um, who knows, might have been a good decision, might have been a bad decision, but uh, I'm really happy with the camera itself so far. It takes really nice um, 1080 and 4K footage and it also does really high frame rates. So I should be able to get some sweet slow-mo action on the, on the old scope cam. And it also makes, for, um, makes it easy to get really nice cinematic looking B-roll to um, spice up your videos as well. So not only does it work well as a scope cam, but it's sort of, it's, it's actually a really good camera on, in its own right. So let's have a bow peep, shall we? So this is how it comes. It uh, has this nice little carbon fiber look case. Um, let's open it up and have a geese at what we've got in here. It's nice that it comes in a case. So I went with the 50-50 uh, prism. So this bit here um, goes onto your scope. And then as you can see by the diagram here, it sends 50% up to the camera and 50% back, um, uh, back to your eyepiece. So I went with 50-50 because um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of night shooting. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to prove to be the right choice, but with the sensor, um, this, the sensor in this camera is the same size as the sensor in that big camera up there. And it's, it's like much, much smaller, but um, it's got a very powerful sensor in it. So it's, uh, it should be sweet. So we'll have to wait and see how it performs in low light. But um, yeah, so I've got half the light going to the camera and the other half going to your eye. So it should still be usable uh, in low light conditions. Um, I also went with the universal adapter so that it fits many different sizes of o ocular lens. It kind of just works the same way that your uh, garden hose cr clamp works, which is uh, genius, looks good. Doesn't look like it's gonna um, scratch any scopes or anything, so that's nice. Feels very well made. Now we made in England, so that's the uh, universal scope holder dash four six. I'm guessing that's up to 46 millimeters. Made in England, aluminium. Feels good. Pop that over there. And then we just have all these other bits and pieces that um, come with it. So I used the um, build your own uh, scope cam, your build your own side shot scope cam system on their webpage. And then, um, yeah, paid the money and they sent it to me. So very good. They didn't sponsor this video or anything. So this is all just because I'm fascinated by it. So. Looks like we've got a rubberized eyepiece there and some other bits and bobs. We've got grub screws and an Allen key and more grub screws and another Allen key, smaller ones. What else have we got in here? We've got a lanyard, interesting. Not sure what that's for. And one more piece that looks like that goes over the, uh, the lens of the camera. Wonderful. I reckon we'll fit it up and see how we go. Alrighty, so here we are. We've got the uh, the old FX crown on the bench. As you can see in the background there, ooh, there's uh, a few other toys, but uh, we're gonna have to wait until the rest of my mail gets here to, to mount them up because somebody didn't put a Picatinny rail on the crown. So apparently nobody makes <laughs> 34 millimeter scope rings for a uh, air gun dovetail, but I guess that's a uh, strange PCP air gunner's problem. So let's uh, let's get to it. Let's rip off these little scope caps. 
go. These OptiZan scope caps are great, by the way. Aluminium. Nothing can really go wrong with them. I like it. Very well made. All right. So now that we've got that going, let's, uh, I suppose we'll just assemble our prism with a nice big fingerprint on it. Well done, Hodge. Lovely. All right. No finger marks. So, image going that way. We'll put the eyepiece on. Screw you on like that. Then, adapter. What have we here? So, we've got these two now. Looks as though these two pieces go together. Now, final piece on there. Like so. Very good. And that just goes in there. Like so. And I guess that's where the grub screws go. And you just mount your uh, your eye relief, your camera's eye relief, I suppose. Very good. Very good. Pop him on here. Screw it up. I'm going to try the uh, 12 o'clock position first. See how that goes, and if that works, or if it doesn't work, we'll, uh, we'll put it off to the side. I reckon, we'll, like non-strong side, so it's away from my face. It's probably a good way to go. Nice, nice. All right. So my little camera here. If you watch when you turn it on, it uh, extends its little baduba out, and then you can uh, zoom in change the focal length like so but when you turn it off it extends fully and then goes back in so I think what we're gonna have to do is turn it on let it extend fully and try and adjust so that it uh, sits nicely in there like that so we'll max out the uh, maximum length of that with the grub screws, I'd say. And uh, that way we'll have full use of our scope camera. Cool beans. Alrighty then. I reckon we'll probably attach this onto our camera first. So we've got a few little easy to access thingies. Oh wow, this is very fiddly. Pro tip, don't do this somewhere where you could possibly lose anything. <laughs> Looks like they were nice enough to send a spare grub screw for the uh, the bigger ones that hold that piece to this piece. But uh, these little grub screws are very very finicky and small. Alright. One down, eight to go <laughs> with my big stupid fingers. All right, so we've got that uh, mounted on there now. Looking schmicko. Just did them up um, reasonably tight, just with the sort of one finger's length of leverage on the old Allen key. Uh, I tend to overdo things, so I've self-limited myself this time in the hope of not breaking it. So now I'm going to turn it on. So that's how much we've got sticking out and now I can just pop it in there and uh, hopefully that'll be the, the exact correct measurement so I'll go ahead and tighten down these other grub screws and hopefully it'll have enough purchase on there to hang on to my camera. Oh no! You beauty! Very nice. Okay, so here we are, all done. Let's uh, pop him up on there. Let's try and get as close as we can. Tighten that down. Pop our cap open. And fire up the camera. That looks good. Doesn't appear to have missed anything all right so there you have it 
that's uh, that's what it looks like all set up. Seems like I can get my eye up to it um, with it uh, standing up like that. So I'll give it a go like that and we'll see how we go. Um, one thing to note is the eye relief is real tight. Your eye basically has to be touching the, um, the rubber to, to get a good sight picture and you have to be 100% square looking straight down. Otherwise it's really difficult to get a sight picture. So just one thing to note, if you were thinking about using just the side shot like this on a rifle that actually produces a fair amount of recoil, like this one doesn't, this is a PCP air gun's almost completely free of recoil. But um, yeah, if you're going to shoot something that has a, a bit more kick to it, um, it might be worth considering different options. Or at least getting one that uh, just puts your camera down here instead of having it up here. And then you just look through your, your camera's uh, viewfinder and hope for the best. Let's go shoot some stuff. So as you can see, we have some uh, horrendous weather going on. So I've just decided to set my little table up here on the back patio and down oh yonder, 47 meters away. You'll see my target set up down there. I've got some steel targets down the bottom that I'm gonna just do a quick test with, then upload that footage to my computer and uh, make sure that it all looks pretty good. And then uh, we'll go on and do some slow motion shots of the the shaving cream and the apple and the uh, orange fantery looking drink down there. Should be a good time. Make sure we're on the right settings. Hit the record button. Send it. Might be a touch loud for up here. Go back to three. This eyepiece is very annoying. So, as is our custom, I've gone the wrong way again. Standard stuff. One day I'll get that figured out. What is your problem? Fun stuff. Ah, wonderful. Fun fact about the old RX100 Mark V. Buy lots of spare batteries. <laughs> Okay, so it would appear that the trick is to uh, set it up, have it uh, autofocus itself, and then switch it over to manual focus. Uh, Smash that record button. And now let's try hit that target again. Lovely. All right, still recording. Very good. Looks like everything's in focus. So let's uh, take that apple out. Lovely. Now that we got him down, let's go for our soda bottle. Big old orange one. A little bit of a breeze in the background. <laughs> delightful, delightful. All right, so I think before we go and hit that shaving cream, we'll just go and check the footage, make sure it's all good, so that we don't waste the only targets that we have left. <laughs> all right, we're up at uh, 100 frames a second. I'm gonna knock down our little shaving cream friend on the ground there. Zoomed out a little bit just so we can see more of it. Very nice. Very nice. All right, so we've got one more can of cream down there. I'm gonna uh, smack it and we're gonna record it in 240 frames a second. So 
we'll see how we go. Basically, I have to shoot the can and then press the button afterwards to capture the last however many seconds of footage it is. A little bit of a difficult shot. There's quite a bit of grass in the way. Slight breeze, but we should be all right. Skip the top of it. Didn't break the can. We'll just hit it on the side. No. No! Turn off. I want you to do things. Frustration. Try that again. Got to be quick. God damn it. Well then, that's profoundly disappointing. I didn't set the camera up properly then, so we've basically got no fun stuff to shoot, so we're just gonna shoot steel. That's processing. Once that's all done, we'll go and chuck it on the computer and see how she goes. Well, there you have it. Uh, parting thoughts. I think uh, it's a good idea if you're if you're running a new camera, obviously, to um, learn your camera as much as you can before you go out. Spend time doodling around in your backyard, plinking with it if you can, and um, make sure that you're all good so that when you do go out on a hunt and, or you do go to the range or whatever to use your um, scope cam in anger, if you will, um, you know what you're doing. So I've got a little bit of work to do. I've got a try and figure out how to um, get that focus running properly because it does produce a really nice crisp image when when the autofocus uh, focuses on the right thing but um, I'm used to running uh, this camera which is a Canon camera and they kind of have a, a better menu system than the Sony cameras do um, and everything's kind of just a little bit more intuitive so I think I just need a bit of practice with that other camera to get used to it and uh, get it running good but as far as 50-50 uh, light to uh, camera and then light to um, the uh, the eye. It seems pretty good. Um, no real no real qualms there. Happy with that. Um, and yeah, yeah, not a bad little setup. Um, other things to note on horrible rainy days like today is that uh, if you're using a camera like the Sony, it's um, it's not going to be weatherproof. So that's probably a tick in the box for the GoPro. Um, if you do have that in mind, if you are thinking about um, using your scope cam for hunting more than sort of just plinking type stuff um, that's probably something that you should consider and it's probably a good idea to run with the GoPro style um, as well if you're running a uh, heavier recoiling rifle because um, I don't know how a uh, point-and-shoot camera would go whilst getting wild on by something like a 308 so keep that in mind Got a few more interesting things to come in the next couple of weeks um, mostly gear reviews well not reviews really but just videos on cool stuff that I bought so uh, stick around for that if you enjoyed the video smash that like button subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one cheers